is it was an old brick quarry, right where that housing estate is now, that in 1879 workmen found a small skeleton, a fossil of a dinosaur. In 1879, workers at the Chorley Brick Pits in Cumnor in Oxfordshire found a number of fossils in one of the spoil heaps. So they collected them together and they sent them to George Rolleston, who was Professor of Anatomy and Physiology at Oxford University. Now Rolleston, in turn, handed them over to Professor Joseph Preswick, who examined them and realised that they were the remains of a dinosaur, one that he thought was closely related to a guanodon. In 1888, Professor Harry Seeley examined the fossils and determined that they were similar to a guanodon, but there were some significant differences. I mean, for one thing, just look at the size of them. Even though the cumnal find is that of a juvenile, it's still significantly daintier and more agile than an iguanodon. So he decided to give it a different uh, genus name, Cumnoria. The story, however, continues, and in 1889, only one year later, Richard Lidecker assigned them to an American genus called Camptosaurus, which had also been discovered in 1879. Now, Camptosaurus was an early lithopod, and they'd found several remains of this animal already across the United States. And it was Camptosaurus that this individual was known by throughout most of the 20th century. And it's still the name that is on display at the Oxford Natural History Museum. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, there was a re-examination re of early ornithopods and early iguanodonts. And in certain papers, such as these ones displayed here, it was suggested that Cumnoria was actually a separate genus. For one thing, specimens of Camptosaurus had been found across North America, Europe and Asia. And with re-examinations of all these different finds across the world, subtle differences that had been missed in the past had started to be noticed. So many of these individuals got reassigned to different genus and species names. And Cumnoria, Cumnoria was one of these. So it is officially back on the list. Cumnoria Press Wiki. So what kind of creature was Cumnoria? Well, the type specimen is about three and a half meters long, but it's thought to be that of a juvenile. And it, I mean, look at it, it's really quite cute and dainty. And comprises most of the remains of, of the animal. You've got pretty much the entire skeleton here. There's parts of the skull that are missing, little bits of the forearm, and most of the ribs, along with a bit of the hip. But other than that, you've got a very, very well preserved fossil here. Now, assuming a fully grown adult would have been very similar to the closely related Camptosaurus, then we're looking at a creature that was about six meters in length. Now, Cumnoria was a herbivore and would have been foraging around the forests and shorelines of late Jurassic Europe. During the Cameridian age of 157 to 152 million years ago, Europe was a series of islands surrounded by a warm, shallow sea of the north edge of the Tethys Ocean. As for its close relations, where it sits on the dinosaur family tree, Cumnoria is part of the branch of dinosaurs known as the ornithopods. And the ornithopods are a series of herbivorous dinosaurs that came particularly to dominate the Cretaceous period across much of the Northern Hemisphere. And it is a early ornithopod, part of a group called the Iguanodontia, and then within the clade Ankylopolexia. Now, this is a fancy word of saying fused thumb, which is in reference to the thumb spikes that are a common feature across many of the early Iguanodontia. It may be small and maybe unassuming, but Cumnoria is this week's dinosaur. <laughs>